Hello and welcome to the Kundalini podcast. That was Zen. This is Dao. I'm Vivek Kovic. Namaste. This is episode 114. Today I'm going to talk about similarities in different religions and differences in different religions. And more so than religion, mystical sects and groups that uh, deciphered the very nut bolts of knowledge and how they actually accidentally stumbled upon the deep secret esoteric knowledge, wisdom of the ages passed down, which is common to all human beings throughout cultures. And what was the distillation of that? I am fortunate enough because of my Kundalini awakening to be a downstream from that, to be at the receiving end of an awakening, which is the very basic building block of any religious tradition. A Kundalini awakening, I have said so before in my videos, is the beginning of someone gaining some kind of ascendance. And that thought, the philosophy that flows from that person, becomes uh, advanced knowledge for that culture in that era. And we have various traditions that all lead to that same voice and, you know, similarities keep accumulating. But outside of those religious traditions, there have been mystery schools and people who have uh, pursued things as a result of a divine awakening that were not necessarily in any organized religion, but showed signs of advanced knowledge, greater abilities with creative arts like painting or music and managed to leave behind some messages from that expanded state of consciousness that increased wisdom or communication to the divine being within yourself. I'm talking about people like Leonardo da Vinci. So, as I have said before, the Holy Grail or the divine feminine, the cup, the chalice are all references to the hidden Kundalini energy at the base of your spine. And when it releases, that's when a Kundalini awakening begins. That's the basic. So, if we assume that Leonardo da Vinci had such an awakening and he wanted to spread that message, now he has expanded uh, knowledge, awareness. And through his paintings, through the art that he leaves behind, he's trying to give you clues. So there is a famous painting called The Vitruvian Man. I'm sure everyone has seen it. It is a man with outstretched arms and outstretched legs inside a circle, drawn inside a circle. And what Da Vinci is trying to show there is that proportion is everything. Our body is perfectly proportioned and the parts have certain measurements and dimensions. For example, your foot, the length of your foot is exactly the same as the length of your forearm from your wrist all the way down to your elbow try it if you want just take off your foot and place it against that you'll see that they're exactly the same size so that's a proportion and the human body has proportions within itself he has drawn a circle around it this is the same as the golden ratio which becomes the rule of thirds when you see it photographically. So the entire world is made up of these symmetries, these patterns repeating themselves. And your human eye and how it receives input through visual stimulation that becomes something that you saw outside is all received within that golden ratio pattern and symmetry that's set up within because of your visual apparatus. So to hide that secret of this is the patterns, these are the patterns hidden within the universe and our awakening has made us aware of it. These enlightened beings left that in art. So the Vitruvian man, if you superimpose the pyramids in Egypt on the top half of that circle, those proportions exactly match 
that human being. So that the clue to that pyramid is left within that uh, paint. Isn't it fascinating? Because they're both based on the golden ratio. If you look at the structure of the pyramids from the sky, they're in that golden ratio pattern. This lends itself to a deeper study of numbers, which are called the Fibonacci sequence of numbers. And they all tie in. The golden ratio is present in everything in nature. The way flowers open up, the way a shell is shaped naturally, just shell found in the ocean is shaped in that golden spiral, golden ratio. When you take photos and you put it on that grid of rule of thirds, certain placements make it more pleasing and a better picture than others. The compositional element comes from the rule of thirds, which is the golden ratio and the Fibonacci sequence. All of these are interrelated. Fruits, vegetables, palms, how they unfold their whorls, petals, flowering of branches is all of that same pattern again. It's in nature all over the place. And when you're awakened, uh, you become aware of that. Another pattern is music, certain tones, how they create music. And when you break it down to its elements, its fundamental units of uh, music, building blocks, they all become the same. It's 12 notes, seven regular notes and five what are called chromatic notes, the black keys on the keyboard. And the seven notes are the white keys on the keyboard. When you combine those 12 notes, it creates an octave and a certain sound. And there are certain patterns, which is called the circle of fifths. What sound or grouping of sounds is pleasing to the ear followed by a certain grouping of sounds that you just played. There's a certain pattern to that. That is inherent within all human beings and your sense of hearing itself is geared to listen to that and find it harmonious as music. So every awakening that happens explores these fundamental rules, the golden ratio, rule of thirds, the circle of fifths in music, the theory of color, which is a rainbow and why it splits into that spectrum, how your chakras are affected by that. And these are common factors that everyone finds after Kundalini awakening. You could be in any tradition, at any point in history, in any culture. To give a, an example of a, a modern day phenomenon, that has been shown in, shown in popular culture in a movie, like the Matrix movies, for example. They show a dark screen and green code that drops down like it's raining in that digital sense. That wallpaper became really popular after the movie Matrix came out, right? <laughs> Those letters coming down. If you take that as an analogy to the awakening process, then that code in the real sense, after an awakening, is these ratios, the Fibonacci, golden ratio, repeating patterns that you see in nature over and over again. Makes it very easy to compose pictures. You have an inherent understanding of compressing 3D into 2D. And that 3D to 2D compression and how it fits on that grid becomes very obvious to you. Similarly, sounds notes, music and a beat, its relationship along with to intoning mantras, how that affects the flow of the energy, how different music creates different rhythmic patterns when the energy is flowing through you like a snake, what is calming, what is agitating. So along with learning mental control and a control over your own senses and stimulation leading to response, you become more calm, still to within. So still calmness helps to be more aware of these things, patterns in nature, cycles, music 
as it affects the energy what that does different ragas in classical music give a different color a variation to that energy that's flowing within they work together it sways rhythmically to that energy the kundalini energy has some issues with certain music and you don't feel comfortable around that music so you go somewhere else put some other music on like i said classical ragas mantras and the energy flows right way and you know good things happen you start feeling better and you are more tuned to that so naturally just by having the energy and the insights that it provides sensations feelings how it feels better or worse based on what music you listen to that guides your exploration through music afterwards similarly with uh, the presence of certain energies around you harsh energies that becomes unbearable for the kundalini energy and then you have to have a soft uh, mellow environment where you can be isolated have meditation tools you shy away from harsh noisy environments so some of the things that happen naturally i'm trying to describe them which may have been left out in talk about just religion spirituality techniques and methods so i thought i'd mention these in this video as i have said before the awakening of the kundalini energy doesn't just bestow a religious fervor or quest for communion with the divine it also gives you various abilities and talents and depending on each awakening each person gets something different so some may be more artistically inclined and you only know them as artistic geniuses but even then through that work they are trying to express the divine and their themes might be religious but in a hidden way as a result of the awake they may not directly be worshiping god or talk about that spiritual stuff they may express that through art it's the same thing being expressed but that person got that gift so a lot of artists that are geniuses who, are, who their works have lasted for centuries and centuries were you know awakened in some way through a kundalini process or some kind of an awakening process i see the patterns because i have my own awakening and now i compare things okay so what's common what do you learn about the universe that helps you navigate it better now that you have an ascended sense of being and it's these things intonation of mantra i needed that to make the energy flow the right way i needed grounding i needed breathing exercises and in studying all of these things i became good at music and learning about which kinds of music were specifically geared towards the kundalini way so like i said mantras help uh, indian classical music soothes the energy and imparts a certain mood or emotion based on which raga it is that you're playing and these are some of the things that get left out and never get mentioned in kundalini literature which is very focused on a uh, spiritual stuff at all times thought i'd mention this i hope you found this helpful please click like subscribe and please leave me comments this is vivek govekar signing off peace love blessings be well